I shall talk about uh, using Postgres SQL for SS systems, uh, in particular for monitoring of mediation solution. Uh, first of all, uh, what's all about? What is mediation? Uh, when I mm, take my cell phone and trying to obtain a voice session of a GSM network, uh, the collector uh, is CDR file is generating. Uh, CDR file is just text file with some data about uh, my call. Mediation system uh, is something in between uh, collectors uh, and uh, billing. <coughs> billing system should be quite particular, uh, so usually it's slow. And uh, mediation system uh, need to, to process data first, and then deliver data to the billing system to make financial statements. Uh, in more particular, uh, we have uh, lots of uh, collectors all spread geographically in Russia. And uh, that collectors uh, connected with other systems uh, which provide uh, mediation tasks. For example, uh, blocking somebody or um, giving to some, uh, granting to somebody uh, access to some feature uh, which was ordered uh, by uh, clicking his uh, phone to obtain some entertainment, uh, for example. Uh, just to check uh, if he could be in data roaming or if he could uh, send SMS. Uh, and all of these files uh, are processing uh, during the chains uh, and uh, we are splitting, merging uh, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, this system is pretty huge. Uh, there are uh, hundreds and thousands of different systems which uh, participate in the mediation process. And finally, they put CDR files to billing system. Of course, the system needs to be monitored, because it's complicated and it's really, really mission critical. Uh, single failure of uh, uh, one or two uh, <coughs> members of uh, one chain, uh, it's really, uh, it's, it's really very, very bad uh, about money because uh, uh, every uh, terror provider is uh, collecting huge amounts of money uh, for. Uh, so, uh, what's needs and expectations for mediation monitoring? Uh, <coughs> At the first glance, it's quite simple uh, because it's uh, very similar to network, usual network monitoring. And uh, uh, we need to process uh, some parameters about uh, CDR's uh, uh, processing. That means uh, uh, amount of uh, CDRs, for example, here, and uh, velocity of uh, moving CDR files uh, from this point uh, to this point, for example. Uh, but uh, because it's not uh, a simple network monitoring, uh, we need some special tasks. For example, we need to check chain integrity uh, and uh, uh, we need uh, something like early warning alerts because uh, if uh, the problem appears here, uh, definitely uh, leads to, pro to be a problem here, but uh, uh, not uh, at, uh, at the same moment. And so we need to monitor different chains in different combinations, and it's a bit complicated. Uh, when uh, also we need to provide a, a GUI for first uh, line of technical support. Uh, and uh, there are um, a lot of people uh, who need to work with this view because they also spread geographically and uh, we work uh, 
24 hours, uh, 7 days a week, and so on and so on. Uh, first, uh, we are looking uh, to open NMS because it's a uh, book standard uh, open source monitoring solution. Uh, it's uh, highly customizable and extendable, uh, and uh, also it's PostgreSQL based. Uh, we have concern about using open source system uh, for this uh, monitoring because uh, we need to uh, cut uh, a bit expenses. Uh, but OpenMS, uh, as I said uh, earlier, is uh, just for LAN, not for cellular, and uh, not for our particular cellular provider. Uh, so we need to customize it uh, to meet our requirements. Uh, so we developed some plugin set, extension set for um, PostgreSQL, it's, we call it just now in metrics, and maybe we'll uh, publish it uh, like open NMS extension, but it's, uh, now we are discussing this uh, probability. Uh, and uh, this is a plugin set uh, just for viewing, uh, and uh, PHP SQL uh, application for processing data uh, to um, monitor and change for to traverse and change and so on and so on uh, and uh, this part is uh, really complicated and huge. Uh, that's uh, the real question: Why to use uh, exactly PostgreSQL? Uh, first, uh, when we have uh, such complicated system to monitor, uh, its monitoring became mission critical too. Uh, so we need file safe and consistency, and definitely we need database, not uh, NoSQL, not MySQL. Uh, we could uh, use something bulletproof. Uh, PostgreSQL uh, is open source, uh, so you do not need to pay for license. Uh, and uh, it's simple, it's really simple, because uh, when you start uh, learning Oracle, for example, uh, you need uh, to dig through a very, very, very huge amount of documentation because it's old and very complicated uh, system. Uh, and uh, it's sometimes uh, not very easy to find appropriate uh, uh, DBA uh, to use it every day and so on and so on. But when you take PostgreSQL, it has not so huge documentation. Uh, and simply to um, start it to use for entry levels uh, engineers. Uh, and uh, last but not the least, uh, Oracle fashion procedures. Uh, because in uh, telco systems, uh, engineers usually use Oracle and uh, they uh, like Oracle style uh, PL SQL. But mm. very uh, SQL uh, procedures are not quite the same, but uh, uh, they look like an oracle, and uh, ideologically they uh, are a bit similar. Uh, so, uh, the most interesting moment. Uh, we <laughs> we will need to uh, come to our customer uh, and proceed uh, their DBAs uh, that PostgreSQL is quite enough and uh, quite nice. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a bit tricky moment. Uh, anybody who works as DBA or uh, everybody are developers? Who are DBA? And uh, how you like innovations? Something novel, something extremely interesting, uh, and to migrate data. I suppose uh, every DBA do not like uh, something new. And then uh, it's a new huge database. Uh, we are not happy uh, to listen to <laughs> such thing. Uh, and uh, except of this, uh, uh, they are old school. They like Oracle. They know everything how to uh, cook Oracle. Uh, their systems are mission critical, and their systems are counting money. And uh, then they ask a couple of questions about uh, functionality of PostgreSQL. Uh, you may be uh, agree with them or not, uh, but if you want uh, to replace Oracle uh, or even db 2 MS SQL Server, it doesn't matter, uh, you should be prepared 
but um, uh, DBs uh, will ask you some set of questions. And here is the set of awkward questions for replacing uh, uh, Oracle by Fastberry SQL. First of all, they ask about uh, backup and recovery. Uh, you know Oracle <coughs> Recovery Manager, uh, which is called Airman, uh, is uh, very old and uh, has a lot of functionality. Uh, it's uh, really nice sometimes to just do something like this and duplicate 5 terabytes database from one node to another. Uh, sometimes it's fail, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Oracle has really good tool for backup and uh, Oracle style DBAs like it very much. Uh, second, uh, Oracle has the wait event interface. Uh, so it's uh, a special uh, metrics uh, in uh, the kernel of database uh, which uh, perform some statistic about how long uh, you wait for a specific operation. It's really nice to tune it and uh, we can use uh, PG catalog views and collect statistics about it. Uh, but it's not the same thing because uh, every uh, book about uh, monitoring uh, Oracle using uh, weight interface uh, is about oh uh, uh, in the last century we used to compare a uh, cache sheet rate uh, but it's too old fashioned now we use weight interface um, but in Postgres sometimes you still need to uh, look on uh, heat cache uh, rate uh, cache sheet um, then about uh, more pragmatic moments like table partition. Don't tell me about uh, table inheritance. When you have lots amount of data, we have uh, thousands and thousands of uh, data per se uh, in search per second. Uh, it's uh, not about table inheritance because uh, it's un quite unusable in such a situation. And data compression, uh, not tools but Oracle style data compression, I have now to, uh, nothing to answer to them at uh, first, uh, first moment. And uh, 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 so forth, so forth. Uh, automatic storage manager, manager, uh, manager when you uh, take the disk array and let Oracle uh, to use disks uh, uh, without any file system. Uh, but um, likely, uh, luckily, um, they are too conservative to use uh, such new feature, which was introduced really uh, in uh, uh, Oracle attempts, but uh, ready for use uh, it is only in 11th Oracle. Uh, so that's not important uh, a year or next five years to uh, discuss this point with uh, other people. Uh, so uh, the recipe is uh, really nice. Uh, don't argue about obvious things. Uh, if you tell to Oracle DB that uh, Postgres way to make backups is better than in Oracle, uh, he will think you are a stupid student. Uh, and uh, it's uh, not, not possible to argue about such things. Yes, in Postgres SQL we have different backup. It's still enough, it's still sufficient, but it's different. Uh, about partitioning, I will talk a bit later. Uh, about compression, uh, after the first talk with them, I first, oh, uh, where's ZFS? Uh, you make uh, use ZFS compression for uh, using Postgres, tell them that it's possible, and uh, the decision was made. <laughs> but uh, really, it's not so simple. I will <coughs> talk about it later too. And, uh, the last moment is, is really, really important, and sometimes uh, it's a bulletproof argument. Uh, Oracle costs money, huge money, and uh, when the session strikes, it's really much simple to discuss such uh, migration. Uh, what I told about necessary and sufficient. Uh, if you're using a uh, Postgres SQL for monitoring process system, it's not so, so, so mission critical like billing system or, for example, uh, payment uh, processing system. 
uh, you have had hot standby uh, and you have uh, 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 Postgres style backup. It's quite uh, enough and sufficient for using such a system. Because the main goal is uh, when you have failure uh, to recover basic functionality for this moment. Uh, you don't need, uh, of course you need, but not uh, so far. Uh, so, so fast, you um, you don't need uh, some reports for from last month uh, to recover immediately. Uh, you just need uh, functionality for support, uh, support engineers uh, to let them to monitor uh, current situation, and you can uh, recover from this fairly fast. And then uh, two or three days recover uh, reports from the. Uh, last year, for example. Uh, about partitioning. Uh, we need partitioning because we have huge amounts of data and we need to emulate it uh, in a common way uh, and processing, uh, cutting it in different tables by day, by hour, and, and so on and so on, and doing it by just uh, PLC code. That's no way uh, to do it uh, fast. Mm, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, compression. Uh, about compression, uh, you see, compression really increases uh, our I/O velocity because uh, uh, you can read less data. Uh, you have uh, uh, not uh, so huge sticks on your disks, uh, but uh, compression in Postgres is on the toast. Uh, that means automatically compression of uh, some huge tuples. Um, uh, we tried uh, ZFS uh, for external compression. It works. Uh, uh, the success was not, not so tremendous like at first, because when you enable compression for some huge, huge table in Oracle, uh, sometimes uh, you became faster uh, in two times. Um, 15 10 percent uh, in most cases here and uh, you need uh, to tune ZFS carefully you need to struggle with uh, RS cache uh, and uh, so on and so on uh, at this moment I could not recommend uh, to use this way and uh, I think we need to, to test it better uh, and uh, pretty nice moments about uh, using PostgreSQL, which uh, we noted when we start developing and testing our system. Uh, first uh, is uh, HStore, and uh, about HStore uh, will be next slide. And second is common table expression, in particular recursive uh, uh, queries. Uh, recursion uh, is really uh, needed because we have uh, chains of uh, our systems collectors uh, and uh, CDR processing is some path uh, in this chain. Uh, so we need uh, trees, uh, we need to uh, traverse this tree, uh, this trees, and so we need recursion. Uh, and uh, that's pretty nice, but uh, uh, in th at that moment, uh, PostgreSQL enables uh, recursive column tables fresher server than Oracle. Uh, uh, Oracle always had uh, connect by clouds, uh, but it's just a uh, steroid uh, variety of uh, common table expression in such way. Um, and uh, when, we were, uh, may, uh, when we had to um, make a decision which database to use, uh, Postgres already has it. And uh, it's, it's really, really nice. And about HStore. Uh, HTOR is a key value uh, payroll style uh, hash uh, which you can uh, store in text field and perform some operations on it. And it's really nice. It's, it, it's a bit uh, hack, but uh, it's quite useful. Because if you have non relational data, data, that means the data uh, which, is, uh, which do not need to be involved in. Uh, Relational operations. It's better to store it in some way uh, in single field 
uh, and serialize it uh, in some way. Uh, because if you store in such field XML, uh, you need to validate it constantly, you need to produce it, you need to read it, sometimes it became broken and you have a uh, lot, a lot of fun storing XML. If you are using uh, entity to good value architecture for such huge amounts of data, it doesn't work. So we need some uh, efficient uh, storage for such uh, non-relational data and they store uh, sometimes I will uh, to use uh, some uh, attributes from HStore in where clause because you can uh, build a functional index on uh, HStore. And uh, a nice moment about it that uh, our non relational data usually is some, uh, some parameters from CDR files. So we, didn't, uh, we don't uh, need to process it in SQL. But we need uh, to draw it on our plots for our GUI. And uh, this chain is pretty nice uh, when you are using Postgres. Uh, because HStore is easily convertible to JSON, and every Java uh, GUI generating uh, software understands JSON quite nice. Uh, and generating uh, JSON from HStore is uh, a uh, pretty nice one uh, storage uh, function uh, which uh, is only CPU consum uh, consumable and uh, it uh, doesn't hit disk and it works really fast. Uh, so you can uh, take uh, HTOR field and produce JSON from all of these attributes uh, quite fast and um, it really works nice. Uh, sometimes it's a bit lispy, but it's not a problem for real Jedi's. Um, you need to write something to this uh, <laughs> if you have complicated uh, code, but we try to avoid uh, uh, this uh, approach to coding. Uh, the moment, uh, that sad moment about PostgreSQL is uh, about its transactions. Uh, we use two things. Uh, First of all, uh, monitoring is also a reporting system. So we use uh, long-running transactions, long-running uh, complicated selects. Uh, we need to log it on each stage. We need uh, to use uh, asynchronous messaging queries uh, to uh, transfer our data from one node to another and so on and so on. And we really need these two points. First is Pragma Autonomous Transaction. Uh, Oracle style. In PostgreSQL there is not uh, such uh, uh, pragma, so when we have long-running uh, procedure, we could not log something, because if we roll back, uh, we lose all our changes uh, and logging too. Uh, and skip logged uh, is a very nice uh, feature uh, when you could uh, type just uh, select for update uh, and add skip logged uh, and uh, you can process your queries really fast. It's very really usable for uh, asynchronous messaging uh, and database scalability using asynchronous messaging. Uh, so uh, that's uh, all about this system and I need to say thank you for our mm, small but powerful Intertech team which run such a huge system and uh, to one of my friends for useful discussion for uh, using JSON in uh, uh, such way. So, questions? Yeah, I can agree with you on the partitioning stuff. Uh, still, you can make it uh, relatively fast uh, with uh, what we did. We created, I guess, uh, some kind of uh, trigger or something. So we automatically redirect writes to the proper mm -hmm. proper partition and we kind of rotate it uh, constantly. So it works fast. So kinda... just, just before this talk, I uh, take a glance on uh, one of our machines. And it was uh, during a Friday, it was about 700 million in sets of raw data. Yeah, yeah, I know. So you know, when you use triggers, on such amounts, 
it's it not really that bad. We 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 are about in the same, maybe yeah. Yeah. We, we can talk later if you want. Uh, I can yeah. show you how we, it we, works. We, we, uh, first of all, we can discuss it, but uh, the second is uh, really working approach. Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, I know. Yeah, it could be it could be automatic, but you know. You, 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 you can make you, it working. You, you, you could uh, run from time to time procedure yeah. instead of uh, fire and trigger by every... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the only problem is the management of this whole thing. It took us like a few months to yeah. figure out how to create those yeah. properly and, and uh, you know, direct to the proper data, data set. Yeah. So yeah. Kinda and in some moment it became slow. Not really, we have a Sloney running on top of that, so kind of, <laughs> we got that too. Sloney is Sloney. Yeah, we're, pro we're just in the same kind of area, so the same, same problematic. Uh, so. Maybe we, we, we should automate it in some way, because it's, uh, it's a bit tricky to maintain it. Yes. Yeah, of course. It's um, a really nice question because uh, we didn't solve it at all. Uh, on some uh, group of bulk operations, uh, we need uh, external tool just uh, run it uh, from uh, Perl or from Java and uh, from time to time fire and commit. But it's not really nice practice, and uh, this problem is still unsolved. That's a real problem. Okay, because. Uh, way to deal with this is uh, to use dblink so the, your transaction connects back to your server and yeah 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 it's, it's a traditional way but uh, it's really slow yeah sure yeah it's really slow it's no, no way to use I, I know there was a nice article about this uh, several months ago I don't know exactly uh, I don't remember exactly man who write it uh, he suggested to use dblink and advisory logs for uh, in instead of autonomous transaction. It's a nice approach, but not for such amounts of data. That's a pity. Uh, can, can you go over the skip log thing uh, again? I, I didn't get that. Uh, skip log, uh, it's, oh, uh, it's uh, introduced in uh, Oracle 11.2 uh, feature, uh, and uh, it's a really nice uh, uh, way uh, to use select for update. Uh, when you put something in the queue, uh, you need to select from top, uh, but uh, if uh, something is uh, locked, you need to wait. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this uh, functionality allows you to skip already locked by the the, 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 the uh, from another session, if somebody uh, do the same thing, and uh, it helps you to uh, to do such stuff uh, concurrently. Yeah, because uh, we have the no wait clause, but I'm not sure that it's called. Uh, no wait is not skip locked because no wait. Uh, that's uh, yeah. Well, it says uh, you can have. Um, I think, I think it's not the same result. What you get okay. is the rows you can lock without waiting, but yeah. any rows that you need a lock for just don't get selected. Yeah. yeah. That's different than yeah, there's sure. no so way we get nothing. I mean, uh, could, could, could you get the same result by uh, doing something by the result? No. no. You, you can only block the table, and it's not very fast. <laughs> Yeah, I just remember we use rules to do, you know, to <coughs> redirect rights to proper table for partitioning. Yeah, yeah. For partition. And it works. Yeah, pretty good, yeah. yeah of we, we use rules too. <laughs> yeah.